What is density? When you hear the word density, what do you think of? Density is a ratio between mass and volume. So you could think of it as a type of concentration. You could think of it as how concentrated mass is in the given space. So if you have a lot of mass in a small region of space, you have a situation with high density. Let me give you a visual illustration of this. So let's compare solids with liquids and gases. The molecules in a gas, they are far apart from each other. In a liquid, the molecules are closer together. In a solid, typically, they are tightly packed next to one another. So looking at that, which of these three phases would you say will usually have the highest density? Will it be solids, liquids, or gases? Generally speaking, most solids have a high density compared to liquids and gases. Gases, they have the lowest density of the three phases. Now, just to put some numbers into this, the density of air is 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter. So if you have one cubic meter of volume, the amount of mass or the amount of matter in that space is 1.29 kilograms. Now let's compare that to a liquid like water. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. In physics, typically density is reported in kilograms per cubic meter. But in chemistry, it's usually reported in grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. To get that value, simply divide this value by 1,000. So the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Now let's compare that to the density of a solid, like the density of iron metal. The density of iron is about 7,870 kilograms per cubic meter. As you could see, solids, they have a much higher density than liquids. And liquids have a much higher density than air. So let's think about what this means. If we have a cube that is one meter across all sides, it's going to have a volume of one cubic meter. If this cube had only air, the amount of mass that would be inside this cube will be 1.29 kilograms. If we filled the cube with water, there would be 1,000 kilograms of water in that cube. If that cube was made up of solid iron, there would be 7,870 kilograms of matter in that cube. So density, it describes the ratio of how much mass is in a given space. So if you can increase the mass within a fixed space, the density is going to increase. Let's say if you keep the mass the same, but if you decrease the volume, if you reduce the space with the same amount of mass, the density will increase. So density is a type of concentration. It tells you how much matter you have in a given region of space. Now, not all solids have a higher density than liquids. A good example of this is ice. The density of ice, which is still made up of water, it's 917 kilograms per cubic meter. So it's a little bit less than liquid water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, because the density of ice 
is less than that of water, it's going to float on water. So let's say we have a beaker with water in it. If we put an ice cube, it's going to look like this. Ice is going to float on water. Objects that are less dense than water will float on top. The heavy objects will sink. So if we have a bar of iron, iron will sink to the bottom because it has a higher density than water. Whereas the ice cube, which is less dense than water, it's going to float. So make sure you understand that. That's the reason why certain objects sink and that's the reason why certain objects float. Objects with a lower density will float on a fluid. Objects with a higher density will sink to the bottom. Now what's interesting is if you calculate the specific gravity of ice, which is the density of ice relative to the density of water, you're going to get 0.917. And what this number tells you is that 91.7% of the ice cube is going to be submerged below water. The other 8.3% will be above it. So if you calculate the ratio of the density of the object relative to the density of the fluid that it's in, it'll tell you the fraction of that object that's either submerged or above the surface of the fluid. So that's the concept of specific gravity. It's the ratio, it's the density of an object relative to the density of the fluid that that object is in, which is typically water. Now, density is also useful for explaining other things that happen. For instance, we know that warm air rises and cold air sinks. The question is why? Why is it that when the air is heated, it's going to rise, but if you cool it down, it will sink? The answer has to do with density. When the air is warm, the gas particles, or the air molecules, they move apart, they expand. And so if you have the same amount of mass over a larger volume, the density will decrease. If you increase the volume without changing the mass, density goes down. But what happens if you remove heat from air molecules? If you take away thermal energy from air molecules, they contract, they get closer. So even though the mass will still be the same, the volume decreases. And if you decrease the volume, the density is going to go up. So warm air is lighter than cold air with respect to density. Cold air is heavier in a sense that the density is greater. So because cold air has a higher density than warm air, cold air sinks warm air rises. One useful application of density and warm air and cold air can be found in hot air balloons. So I'm going to draw a picture. Now, as we heat up the air molecules inside the balloon, what's going to happen is as they gain kinetic energy, as their temperature rises, these molecules will expand. So when you heat up the gas, the volume of the air molecules in that gas, it's going to increase. And when you increase the volume, the density decreases. And so the air inside the hot air balloon will become, will have a lower density than the cooler air outside. As a result, this hot air balloon is going to rise. Now, the downward weight force of this object is the same because the mass didn't change. The only thing that's changing is the volume of the air molecules inside the balloon. Now, the buoyant force, 
The only way for this hot air balloon to go up is that the buoyant force has to exceed the weight force so that we have an upward net force in the y direction. So once the buoyant force exceeds the weight force, the hot air balloon is going to rise. Now the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid, that is the surrounding air molecules, not the air molecules inside but the air molecules outside of the balloon, because air and water they are both fluids, times the volume of the object submerged in that fluid times the gravitational acceleration. The density of air outside of the balloon, that's not going to change. So this value is constant. Gravitational acceleration is not changing. The volume of the object submerged in a fluid, that is this hot air balloon, is submerged in the air around it. That's going to change. So as we increase the temperature, the volume of the submerged object will increase, the air molecules will expand, and that's going to cause the buoyant force to increase. And if the buoyant force gets large enough, if it exceeds the weight force, then there's going to be a net upward force that's going to lift up the balloon. So that's how it works. If you want the hot air balloon to go up, you need to heat up the air molecules. If you want it to go down, you need to turn this device off and then the air molecules will cool down themselves and gradually the hot air balloon will come back down. So that's the science behind how hot air balloons work and how they relate to density.